I'm not going to say where the story is from, but let's just say it's from a mutual family friend. So my friend started going to the gym at all odd hours, and suddenly one day she noticed that there was this older gentleman who was somehow always there as well. So one day he decided to spit some game at her, and they ended up going on a date. She knew that he was older, um, but she didn't know that he was like 60 years old. But she kept emphasizing how his skin looked so nice, how he looked so young. And she was very attracted to him, you know, he kept up with himself. And after a month, they've been talking consistently, seeing each other at the gym. Things are going pretty well. So it's the third date, and you know things are getting a little hot and heavy. And he starts insisting on going over to her house. But it's giving her a little bit of pause. It's only a month, and he's already trying to solidify a relationship and lock her down. She knows that he has, you know, a 91-year-old mother who lives with him. She thinks maybe he just doesn't want to disturb her. But she still is like, no, let's, let's go over to your place. He finally buckles and they end up going to his place because he really wants to get some. And when they arrive, she finds this dilapidated house with like a rusted out Cadillac in the front yard. At this point, she knows that she should probably turn around, but she ends up going into the house. And it turns out that there are several people that are living in the house. There's somebody who's making some food on the stove. And it's clear that his 91-year-old mother does not live with him. He lives with her. He doesn't mind that there are several other people in the house. He literally starts to try to get in her pants in the middle of the living room. Like, not even in the bedroom. And she realized it's most likely because that's where he sleeps, on the couch. She says, absolutely not, leaves, and blocks in. But it was super clear that this old man was trying to get with her so he could have a place to stay. He was insistent on trying to hook up because that was really all that he had to offer. She was like, I guess the saying's true. Men that age are just looking for a nurse or a purse. Keep your apartment and your cash safe, ladies. Okay, so by now, you've probably already heard a lot of talk surrounding Tyler Perry and his comments that he made about black women and black women particularly needing to settle for a man who can only pay the light bill just to receive love, just to have black love. And so... Um, I've seen a lot of talk just like you guys, but I wanted to come on here and provide a different perspective. I want to show you guys what it looks like when you choose light bill money relationships. I want to show you guys and, you know, present to you guys all the stories from different women about what they went through. All right. See, this is the thing. When you are looking at Hollywood and you're looking at social media and what's on TV and what's, you know, some of these celebrities are saying, it's not true. It's not reality. I want to show you guys what reality is for black women who choose light bill money relationships. All right. Because 99% of the time it does not work out. And in our heads, a lot of times a picture is painted. We think that we're going to get the Cinderella story. See, a lot of us tend to think that we are going to get the man, the good man, after he's made it to the top, after we've helped him, after we've birthed all his babies, after we've, you know, helped him with his criminal, uh, criminal record situation. We think that we are going to get, you know, the Jay-Z at a billion dollars as opposed to the Jay-Z when he, you know, was in trouble for stabbing somebody up in the club. We think that we're going to get, you know, the GZ after, you know, he's then slanged all the, the dope in the neighborhoods after he didn't slung all the, the rap music, you know, destroying the community and the minds of these young men. We think we're going to get the Jay-Z as the real estate guru. That's just not what the numbers say. And black women, we have to stop listening to people who really do not care and who do not have our best interest in heart. We have to stop listening to them. And the way that you can tell as to whether or not your best interest is put forth and put at the forefront of whatever issue, whatever conversation, the way that you can tell is when they're actually telling you to do something or encouraging you to do something or, or encouraging you to think a certain way when it actually benefits you individually, not the community, but you individually. Listen, a, a lot of women, especially black women, and mm -hmm. I might get in trouble for saying this, but I will in the in, in our society right now, mm -hmm. black women are making a lot more money for the most part than yeah. black men, right? There are a lot of black men who are successful, but for the most part, black women are making the money. So you, if you can find love, if that man works, you know, at whatever job mm -hmm. and is a good man 
and is good to you mm -hmm. and honors and honors the house and honors his wife and does what he can mm -hmm. because his his gift may not be your gift. Exactly. That is okay. Mm -hmm. That's not somebody who's beneath you. Yeah. That's somebody who came to love you at your worth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? Yes. And as long as he's secure in himself to mm -hmm. know that, yep, she makes most of the money. All I can pay is the light bill. As long as she's comfortable enough to say, I'm going to cover the mortgage and all the other stuff. You pay the light bill. Baby, you can take me to dinner every now and then. Mm -hmm. That is fine. Yeah. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, but that's so hard for a lot of people to take in because that means, no, no, no. I need somebody to, who is, <laughs> I need, I, they need to make five times more and I got to have, the, I got to have, what uh -huh. you keep, but go on, keep, keep, go on, keep your list, baby. Yeah. God, God bless you. Hope it happens. Go on, keep your list. <laughs> but when you talk about just someone to love you and support yes. you, I, I know people who have, who, whose men can't touch what they make. Mm -hmm, mm hmm but when you see them together, that love, that support, that that I got you, babe. Mm -hmm. it's a Settling for the light bill money does not benefit nobody but the person who only has the light bill money. So, again, in this video, I'm going to show you guys the stories because sometimes we got to see it. Some, some of us, we don't think fat meat ain't greasy. We just have to see it. And... You know, it's unfortunate that some many of these women that I'm going to show you that settle for the light bill money situationships and marriages and all of that is sad what happened to them. And I think that what should be told and I get it. A lot of these women, they don't want to come out and allow us into their business. So you're not going to really see or hear these women come out and fully let the world in into their relationships, their marriages, their businesses. And that's another issue, too. But what I want to present to you is the everyday woman, right? Because you're Holly Berry, you're Mary J. Blodges, you're Wendy Williams. See, the millionaire black women like I just named, they can bounce back financially. Maybe not, you know, mentally, emotionally, because that's that's another whole nother story. But they can bounce back financially. What I want a lot of everyday nine to five black women like myself and most of the black woman population or most women in general, we can't bounce back like that financially. We, we, we don't have the same circles, the same connections, the same resources like your Wendy Williams, your Mary J. Blodges, your Holly Berries and your so on and so forth. We don't bounce back as easy. So in this video, I want to show you guys real life stories. OK, real life situations where these women were not able. Many of them were not able to bounce back. But I want to just show you guys what it looks like, what's settling for. Light bill money, struggle, love relationships look like. Okay, so here's a story about one of my friends who uh, became a hospice care wife. Some of you have asked me to share some of the stories. Okay, so in this particular instance, this was a friend. She had two children. She had a small two-bedroom home, but she's doing really well for herself. Had four degrees, really good job. She actually worked multiple jobs because of the field that she was in. There was a guy that she had liked since high school. She had even told me about this guy. She really liked him. Their families knew each other. Um, and she really liked this guy. So fast forward to us getting into our late 40s. And she was on a job and was involved in a racial discrimination settlement and received enough money for her to retire and to be able to send her children to college. And she was just set for life. As soon as she got that settlement, like literally like a week later, this guy pops up and he starts, um, you know, hitting her up on Instagram and all the social media. Um, then he starts hitting us up and saying, hey, who's your friend? So, of course, we didn't know at the time what was going on. We went and told her. She looks into it and she starts telling us that's the guy I was talking about. This guy swears that he does not remember her. However, they have pictures together in high school. And I say pictures, not like at a dance or anything, but they were in some of the same clubs, almost like all the same clubs they were in, you know, but she, he didn't remember. So they meet like two weeks later. He moves into her house with his four children. They move into her two bedroom home with her and her children. And I'm going to tell you, you're looking on social media. They are 
everywhere. I mean, they're traveling the world together. They are with their children. They are, every time you turn around, they're somewhere eating meals that I know is like $100 a plate. I mean, they were just spending money like it was going out of style. Now, on the other hand, this man, he had had been injured at work. And so he was off work. But I'm telling you, they were living it up. But here's the plan. The plan was, is that he was going to get well and go back to work. However, he never went back to work. And as a matter of fact, after his last child graduated from high school, crumped up in her house, putting her and her kids out, all of a sudden she could just do nothing right. She could do nothing right and he just had to leave. And then he divorced her. As soon as he divorced her, he got a moved into a really big house because he got a settlement on his job, a really large settlement, larger than hers, and moved into so he waited until after he divorced her and then made us got that settlement. And so now he's living somewhere in a big gigantic house and her and her children are left with nothing because he spent up all her money. Hospice care. Okay, so that was just one example. I have a few more examples. Um, and then I kind of want to go into detail about statistically how this uh, harms women who, you know, give light bill money relationships uh, a chance. But I want you guys to take note of, you know, forget about the nurse with a purse, right? Because that's what she's calling it. And that is very well true, too. However, a lot of times those nurses with a purse, they come with the purse. So they come with money or benefits that, you know, the all I have is light bill money situation. Uh, he's looking at that like, OK, well, you know, she's going to help me out. So, you know, all I have to do is just provide love. That's all I have to do. I just got to come into the relationship. I'm already a man. So all I got to do is provide love. Not coming into the relationships, providing their own health benefits, their own, you know, financial, you know, benefits, life insurance policies, all of that. But just coming in with love. Do you see how that works out, you guys? That's just one story. All right. So let me let me go into breaking it down a little bit more so that we are all we all can understand what's going on here. Black women are constantly told by every major entity in the black community that in order for black women to have black love, black women must sacrifice parts of themselves to have it. Black women are told to choose better, have higher standards and value themselves while simultaneously being told to settle for any man who is trying, any man who is trying to be a good man, any man who is trying to provide, any man who is trying to get his life together, any man who is trying to be a good father, any man who is trying to find work, any man who is trying to heal from childhood trauma, any man who is trying to be emotionally available, any man who is trying to stop cheating or having side babies. Black women are told that as long as the black man is trying, he should be given a chance. The problem is that these chances that black women are encouraged to give by those like Tala Perry come with permanent and irreversible life-changing consequences and are based on a small percentage of success for actually working out in the favor of the black woman. Sisters, we've got to stop being hospice care wives. We have to. Today, yet another friend I've learned who got married later in life and I'm talking 45 and above because it seems that when myself and my friends who have been single women who yeah wanted to get married when we were 23 to a nice man who uh, built something with us, it didn't happen. And so we turned 45 and then suddenly here come all these brothers, you know, 40, 45, 50, just Rico Suaves. I mean, complete love bomb. They grabbed my friends. They ran them down the aisle. And today I find out yet another one of their husbands has dropped dead. I mean, I just put it that way. He was already sick when he got with her. And what I'm finding is, is that with a lot of my friends, because we've been professional women, are getting married to these men and they are simply looking for benefits. They're looking to rest and to nest. It's not in sickness and in health. It's in sickness and in death. So they realize that they can't 
pee anymore or their kidneys are failing or they feel like they are about to have a stroke or have already had one and then suddenly they meet my beautiful friends who've worked hard to do everything in life to take care of themselves uh, to not be one of the four or five black women who are murdered every day by mostly black men and they come up meet my friends and they run and get married and the next thing I know my friends are dealing with millions of dollars worth of medical bills not only dealing with the medical bills but after these men have passed here come all their grown ugly kids busting up into my friend's house breaking their noses carrying things out of their house and knowing that their dad was living in a one living in an efficiency one of them was living with his mother goes to live with my friend who has a house of her own and then he passes away and then here come all of his grown children and grandchildren kicking in her door to take things because they're certain that she's killed him even though he's been on kidney dialysis for almost as long as well I guess a week after they got married we've got to stop this because here's the the thing that we need to to get in our heads sisters if he did not change y'all's baby's diapers when y'all were 23 24 27 you don't need to be changing his depends if he did not push your babies that you had together after y'all got married in that house that y'all got together in a stroller don't push him around in a wheelchair like the last funeral I went to was of a sister a nurse who married a man who had kids she had kids sister doing just totally fine by herself nice nice condo marries him moves him in few years later he dies a torso diabetes had every limb on his body taken off except for his head she he was a torso by the time they put him in the casket she's left with his medical bills and dealing with his grown kids who feel that even though that condo was already hers before she married him that they're supposed to be getting something stop marrying them stop marrying them if you're not 22 or 23 and y'all are working to build something together don't do it because this is when 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 black men get 45 in their 50s they start to realize that they're they have an expiration date and that's when they decide that they're going to find the best black woman that they can find marry you they make sure you got benefits and you got a place to stay and then they want to come and sit in their femininity but didn't do anything for you they gave their youth and all of their health and their years of fertility and the years that they could have built wealth to some thought or just tramped around or bought cars while we were paying extra to stay in safe apartment complexes we built our built our careers and built our financial wealth and then now all of a sudden they want to come in and move into your house and have you to take care of them while they lay up on you I mean I could go down the list I have one friend uh, married a guy she was totally doing well by herself married him two weeks later he's sick quits working on her medical insurance she's got a million dollars worth of medical bills uh, another friend married a guy oh he was love bombing her I was in their freaking wedding and guess what year after going back for their uh, their one year anniversary I was gonna go back there for it he laid in the bed and died heart attack right um, another friend married a guy soon as she married him he realized that he was sick hmm he didn't know that beforehand gets with her gets on her medical insurance lives off of her and then as soon as he got well from his illness he left her and now she's paying him alimony and has to give him a portion of her retirement sisters we gotta stop being taken advantage of we gotta stop being hospice care wives if you want to get with them go ahead and get with them if you want to move them in your house move them in your house but here's what you don't do do not marry him because then he becomes your financial responsibility and I'm telling you these black kings they love to rest in their femininity they love to come up in your nice house with your fireplace and lay there and have you to nurse them to death mm -mm. if you just want to have him and you just want to a cane you just want one here's what you do because he's gonna move into your house and then you're gonna put your uh, money together then he's gonna take your money to buy you an engagement ring with your money uh, uh tell him don't do that take that money and go get his get him a complete physical get a full physical I'm talking teeth and everything because most of these brothers have not been to the doctor since they were playing football and had a physical right in high school 
in high school and said missing teeth and all this. So look at how much you're going to have to pay to sustain him for the next five years because most of them are dying like at 50 before 55. So if you marry him later in life, see how much it's going to cost you to take care of him. Um, and try to look into see what those medical bills are going to be. Okay. Look at his health insurance if he has any and make sure that he stays on his health insurance and doesn't get on yours because yours most likely is going to be better than his because you will have, you know, built up something and been at your job for a while. Don't put him on your medical benefits. Okay. Once you find out what his health uh, is, then the next thing you do is go get a life insurance policy, no less than $100,000. Get a life insurance policy, go to an attorney, have a will written up and have him to agree that whatever he walked in with is what he's going to be walking out with. And if he should die before you, which he probably will, then his grown ass ugly kids and grandkids and great grandkids can come and get his things in a trash bag sitting out on the yard and they can come and get all of that. Okay. The insurance policy will be in your name. You will be the beneficiary. Now, if he, you, if you all decide that if something happens to him, you want to give his kids, you know, some of that, then y'all decide that and put it in writing and also have it on video because I can guarantee you this. Their daddy could have had prostate cancer and been on kidney dialysis for 27 years. But as soon as he gets with you and moves into your nice house and you clean him all up, and something happens to him, they're going to come running at you and accusing you of taking his life. Sisters, stop being hospice care wives. If you want to be with them, you don't have to marry them. Do not take any financial responsibility for these men that did not take any financial responsibility for you when you were younger and in your 20s. And some of these young girls, y'all trying to get with these these old men because you want to be able to get their social security after they pass away. Okay, let me warn you against that because some of them owe so much money that you ain't going to be able to get nothing once you finish paying for their medical bills and paying for all of the, the expenses that they have because they are sick. And again, you know, I mean, your granddaddy is fine. You know, it, you know, you love your granddaddy. When I say fine, I mean, like, it's, it's, it's great. Like, I loved hugging my grandfather and being there with my grandfather. But it is something that is just kind of gross about an old man that has not taken care of himself. Because many times if they haven't had a woman to take care of and make them go to the doctor, they miss in teeth, they smell like penicillin, shit, and curry, right? Coming out of their noses, hair all up places, missing the side teeth and all that, you know, stop taking them in. You know, don't let anybody use you. You've done the work, you've worked hard, you've been that worker bee, and you've been a, a busy ant worker. When black women are told to settle for men who can only offer light bill money, Black women are essentially being encouraged to sign up for lack, struggle, instability, poverty for those for themselves and pass down generational poverty for their children. Tyler Perry is an example of why many black women are no longer willing to accept the all I have is light bill money. Major entities such as the black church or spiritual leaders, community leaders and entertainers and are entertainment such as movies videos music social media etc all have been advocates for promoting struggle love to black women the problem is that this notion has been sold to black women for decades and has directly proven to be a negative influence on the livelihoods of black women black love is beautiful when it comes with financial security marriage healthy, active fathers, stability, and overall mental health wellness within these relationships. However, according to statistics, when black women settle for light bill money relationships, they find themselves inheriting generational poverty for themselves and their children. In the Brookings article, The Inheritance of Black Poverty, It's All About the Men, it explains that black women have the hardest time of any group of women escaping poverty. Why? Well, according to the article, it's because black women overwhelmingly pair themselves with black men, which are the number one group of men whose chances of being permanently locked into poverty are the highest at approximately 57%. 57% is based on the 4,200 pool of men that the study was done on. Now, we know that that 57% is pretty accurate 
because we know what the prison statistics are when it comes to black men. We know what the, um, you know, um, unemployment statistics are when it comes to black men. So we know that that 57% is a pretty accurate account for the overall black male, um, population. So what does this mean? Well, it means that black males who are born into poverty have the greatest chances of staying in poverty well into adulthood, especially if the males get involved in the criminal justice system or create several children with different women, hence having to pay child support or does not take uh, their financial literacy seriously and therefore never learn how to manage money. All of that affects the women and children because when you pair someone who is already in poverty and who can only afford to play the light bill, you are ultimately locking yourself into yourself and your children that would be created in that union in poverty. So that's how that works. So for those who may say black women have it easier, well, that's not statistically true. Studies show that black women face both racial discrimination and gender discrimination. So in essence of moving up in social class based on getting a job or career and keeping a job and or career, which goes without saying it is directly connected to financial stability Black women face the same struggles as black men and more in the context of financial stability. If black women can climb out of poverty, black men should be able to climb out of poverty and have a better chance. Because like I just said, black men only have to deal, deal with the race and the black women have to deal with both the race and the gender issues in the workplace. All right. So what is not told to women who sign up for light bill money relationships is that the link between poverty, unsafe neighborhoods, fatherless homes, and mental unwellness is extremely high for black women who take those chances. Black women are already at the highest risk for abuse financially, mentally, and physically. Black women are also at the highest risk for being unalived, they're at the highest risk for single motherhood, depression, stress, induced sicknesses, and terminal diseases. Um, and then when you add the stress of being the financial provider for the household, pair with relationship stress, on top of all of that, the likelihood of disaster for black women is high Hence, why black women should not be encouraged to settle for light bill money relationships. In conclusion, what should be told to black women? It's fine. You know, it's not fine, Mr. Perry. It's not fine that with your big black platform, you decided to get up on that couch and try to convince and condition black women to be okay with less instead of encouraging black men to do more. You know what else ain't fine? That you are a black man that went from being homeless to owning BET. What an inspiration you are. And instead of saying, black men, you could do it too, you said black women, y'all better pay that mortgage and be okay with him paying that light bill. And I just really want to understand, why is the message always black women get used to less instead of black men do more, even from the black men who have done more? Now, of course, there are situations where this setup makes sense, where the woman might be the higher earner, but the man is still working, he's still striving, he's still showing effort, he's not complacent. Like, he probably don't got it all right now, but he's getting it, and whatever he's getting makes him satisfied. And that's the very rare secure situation that he's speaking of. But what I've seen more times than not is that men who do not have their money together are insufferable creatures like unhappy and uncomfortable when they're unable to provide. And that uncomfortability within themselves begins to seep into the relationship. And that ego start getting <laughs> beat up. And so that's why I say the messaging needs to change. Don't talk to black women. We gonna love regardless. Our love is abundant. We gonna love whoever we wanna love anyway. But the help we need, Mr. Perry, we need adequate counterparts, both financially and emotionally. 
And let me say one more thing. We are in a recession. We need help. I had a black man tell me, well, this is what y'all fought for. Y'all fought for equality. Yeah, we fought for equality because we wanted to have our own money and contribute our ideas to society. But this ain't equal. We become the top dogs. That's not really what we envisioned. So Mr. Perry, please stop forcing this narrative on us of struggle of in your plays, in your movies, in your interviews, and targeting black women because no other women of any race is forced this narrative upon. We also deserve to feel covered. We also deserve to feel secured. We also deserve to experience effort. And I would really appreciate if a man of your magnitude and stature would highlight and honor more stories like that. And I'm a writer, so if you need some help, holla. Okay? Thank you for your time. Well, Black women should be told that pairing themselves in the all I have is light bill money relationship, guys, is a major catalyst for helping to create issues and problems that are directly linked to mental illness, physical health illness, limited access to resources, limited access to higher learning, educational disabilities, access to uh, lack of access to nutritionally adequate food and safe environments or neighborhoods. I mean, the list just goes on and on. So when you want to know why black women have the highest obesity rates or the highest unaliving rates or the highest single mother rates or the highest mental health uh, issue rates or the highest abuse rates or the highest missing uh, persons rates, just follow the lack, follow the, the struggle and it'll lead you right to a lot of struggle, love stories and poverty. And that's how that goes. So that's all I have for you guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you learned something from the video. And don't forget to uh, leave your thoughts in the comment section. Uh, also like the video. And thank you guys for tuning in. Bye.